respectful among the heathen. They can't stand the Most High's name. So another thing they did, they took us off the land, called us Negroes, African Americans, called us Spanish, and called us all these other bywords. Knowing that we would have lost tribes of Israel, not just black people from Americas, I mean, that, that's here from the slave ships, but the North American Indians and the tribes who was in North Central and South America and in Australia, we are all from the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We lost Jerusalem. So not only would we lose our homeland, our, our family name being Prince of Israel, Yasha Allah, we would also lose the name of our God. Here we got, we got all these names that had nothing to do, even the word Jesus. There was no J's. His name is Yeshua. His name is not Joshua or Yeshua, like, like, like the Jewish people are trying to tell you. They hid Christ's name because, because why? There's no other name under heaven whereby man can be saved. So you think they're going to give you Christ's true name? And they also hid the true name of God because our God name is dreadful amongst the Gentiles. They gave us Buddha who was born December 25th, when you look at the research. Mithra was born December the 25th. Look at the research. Tammuz, who was born December the 25th. They even gave us Yahweh, the bull God. His name is dreadful among the nations. And what is his name, you might ask, that they, 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 they've been suppressing from our forefathers, from our people, who picked cotton, picked peas, who built their plantations, who built this empire. What name are they hiding from us? The true name of God. Ahaya is his name. Even the North American Indians, Ahaya, Ahaya. Yeah, Ahaya is his name. Elder Lawyer. Now let's go to where they begin to deceive our people. Let's go to the book of Maccabees in, the new, in, in, in your Apocrypha. The book of Maccabees, and let's start at 1 and 7. 1 Maccabees 1 verse 7. Come on. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died, and his servants bear rule every one in his place. And after his death, they all put on crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years, and evils were multiplied in the earth. And evils was multiplied in the earth. Here is when Esau, the Edomites, gained power over the earth under Alexander the Greek and his four generals. He was the first, the first over Shittim. This is Esau fulfilling what? The prophecy of our father Isaac in, in Genesis 27, when he said, when the yoke is broke off of thy, thy neck, you will gain dominion. You will gain dominion, folks. So I need y'all to check this out. This is now Edomites or Europeans now gaining rule. So let's get off, let's get off this Khazar conversion as the main conversion or when white people began to become Jews. That's a diversion. OK, trying to go into the time of the Crusades when they were being pressed on either side is is modern history. You have to go back to when Esau became what? That's right. Ruler over the earth as Alexander the Greek. This was not a Japhetic man. This was not this was not an Iranian man. This was an Edomite from Mount Seir. His family line go directly to the dukes and the families that you read in Genesis 36 chapter. Alexander the Greek. Read. Verse 10. And there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes. A wicked root by the name of who? Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes. Antiochus Epiphanes. A wicked root came out of the Greeks. Antiochus Epiphanes. An Edomite, an Edomite here, read. Son of Antiochus the king, who had been in hostage at Rome, and he reigned 
in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks. And he reigned in the 137th year of the kingdom of the Greeks, brothers and sisters. We're talking about his reign would be around, around 200, no, around 100 BC, around that time before Christ would come on the earth. Yeah, about a hundred some might years before Christ would come on the earth, folks. This man began to rule. Now, I need y'all to check out some of the things he did. Read on. Verse 11. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us. So many of our people in high prestigious positions began to make an agreement with this wicked man, Antiochus. Read. Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. Come on. So this device pleased them well. Come on. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. So he would give them contracts and licenses to operate as long as they were upholding the customs and ideology of the Greeks. This is where you get the word Hellenism from, where Hellenists were really, in particular, that's right, Israelites who converted into Greek customs. You notice when you go into a college, and I've been there, you have Greek fraternities. Now, no one is putting two and two together about these fraternities. The Romans ruled after Greece. Why do they go back to Greece? Because this is the point where they would have Hellenism and the conversion and ideology where what? Uh, the, the power structure has, has absorbed other populations into what? Their ideology, their religious rule. It's a religious rule and way of life. It's called Hellenism. It's converting people. It's making people hate their own culture only to get rewarded for what? Oh. Are we back? <laughs> Come on. Verse number 14. Read that again. Uh, verse 13. Then certain of the people who were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Man, I'm going to tell you, something just happened to my computer I've never seen before. It just went on a blank and came back, but it's okay. Read that last piece again. Uh, verse 13. Then certain of the people were so forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Gentiles. So now our people now are outright, outright folks, making a covenant with, with the devil, knowing that they're Hebrews, knowing they're Israelites. And I want to point this out because every time we talk about our people losing our heritage and all that, immediately we want to talk about and blame white people and blame other nations. Okay? Well, no. They could not have done that unless there was people complicit off code amongst us who would, who, who, who would be willing to sell out their own people for position with the ruling class. It would be impossible for them to rule such a people like us unless you have people who are in high position, educated, articulate, who's willing to sell us out because why? Inwardly, they really hate their own people. They hate, they and they feel that they rather align themselves with others. That's not the white man's fault. Hellenism is an evil construct that, get, that that's used because at any time they can come amongst our community and convert a traitor who would hold their cause against us. See, hence the reason we must what? Make codes, bring back the codes of the Bible so we can identify these people earlier, early as evildoers and traitors. See, 
Finish reading. Verse number 14. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem, according to the customs of the heathen. So they began to make a place of exercise, gyms. Gyms, so that they can become a part of the Olympics. Games to the gods. See? Read. Verse 15. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. Man, forsook the holy covenant. You want to see how the Bible prophesied in Jeremiah that we would discontinue from our heritage? Brothers and sisters, this was a slow process. It didn't happen all at once. See? So we had people who did what? Who turned their back on the agreement that our forefathers had under Moses' law and chose and chose to align themselves with Edomites. So then they would do what? They would they would actually push their holy days and all that through the games as a form of control. Use the games as a religious ceremony to pull more of our people in as a form of control. And at the games during intermission, have time, they would, they would just start talking about what? The patriotism of whatever empire that our people are now subjected to. The control, the military, uh, um, um, just whatever they're trying to push, they'll do it at that time during the time of games. It happened right here. This is where we became, where, where we, we stopped using our our natural genetics that was meant for war. Okay. Naturally strong, naturally fast, which means that what? We're really, when you put down all of the chemical weapons they've been shooting in us since our birth, when we, when, if you put down the physical tools and the technology and guns and all that, the physical prowess of Israelites would overtake this whole earth like that. And they know that. But now to compensate, to get a lot of that testosterone out of us, instead of us using our girth and strength and our might to defend our family, we would get all that satisfaction by using our strength only in games, through games. Which is a similitude of war, but you're not really winning anything. So they turned warfare into a game for us so that we can get all of that out of our system, but yet still stay, what? that's right, you got it, subservient. They'll break a bone, uh, 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 the MSL, the, the meniscus, the, the Achilles, they'll tear themselves up as if they were in a war and win absolutely nothing. It started right here. It was like, man, look how strong they are. No one can beat us in war, folks. Hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can forget it. But they said, you know what? Let's make the games for them so that these young men who are growing up, they'll have some place, an outlet for warfare that don't affect the system. Let them use their, their physical prowess in that. Let them break their own bones and all that for nothing but still stay slaves. It started right here under who? Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus. Around about, around 125 BC. Read. Uh, verse number 16. Now, I mean, once, let me see, is it 175 BC? It's about 160. One, 150, around 150, 160, right? Yeah, one, around 164 B.C., around that time. Around 164 B.C., I just want to make sure that date is correct there. Finish reading. Uh, verse number uh, 16. Now, when the kingdom was established before Antiochus, he went to reign over Egypt, that he might have the dominion of two realms. Come on. Wherefore, he entered into Egypt with a great multitude, with chariots and elephants and horsemen and a great navy, and made war against Ptolemy, king of Egypt. But Ptolemy was afraid of him and fled, and many were wounded to death. 
Thus they got the strong cities in the land of Egypt, and he took the spoils thereof, and after that Antiochus had smitten Egypt, he returned again in the hundred forty and third year, and went up against Israel in Jerusalem with a great multitude. Come on. And entered proudly into the sanctuary. So he went into Jerusalem, now in our homeland. Now this also proves that they cannot be the people. Okay. Here is a person in 